What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel. Let's get right into it. And let's discuss Houston Rockets power forward Jabari Smith growth during the summer league. So, um, I did a video a couple days ago on Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson. And basically, you know, I'm kind of analyzing their, their, their game. Well, Scoot Henderson had one game, and uh, so far, Brandon Miller has had three. But I was analyzing their, their game and their, and their performance. And, you know, my overall analysis was don't take Summer League too serious. You know, there's, there's not going to be their initial role. Uh, you know, Brandon Miller won't be a playmaker. Scoop probably will be. He'll, you know, Dame gets traded. He will be the main guy for that squad. But don't take it too serious. You know, they're still learning. They're not in their true roles yet, blah, 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 right? Now, as far as Jabari Smith goes and some other sophomore guys who are playing in, in the Summer League, Take it serious. <laughs> At least take it more serious than what you would with, with one of the rookie players. You know, so I think somewhere in the middle, don't take it too serious because still this isn't Jabari Smith's main role, you know, but don't just discount because he has shown he's gotten better. Jabari Smith through the first two games has looked phenomenal, uh, especially, well, I guess uh, through – through six quarters, because the first half of the Blazers game, he didn't look good. Game one came out and dropped, the, uh, uh, at least on the first half, he dropped about two or three points, wasn't looking good at all. I was very disappointed, you know. Um, but the second half came out blazing, hitting middies, hitting threes, attacking the basket, being aggressive, being physical. I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it, 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 this, is, this is for game one only. I'm like, if he's doing this, then, you know, the Rockets have some on their hands, but maybe just one game, you know, a, a bunch of the Blazers to me, their summer league team isn't, isn't that recognizable. They don't have a lot of guys who will be NBA guys. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it's just one game. Game two versus the Pistons. The Pistons whole team are most of their going to start doing the summer league. Jalen Duren, uh, uh, James Wiseman, the list goes on. It's a bunch of guys on that summer league squad who will be playing meaningful minutes for that Pistons team. And he just cooked them. He cooked them. Same thing. Threes. He, he, he three out of ten threes. A bunch of middies. A bunch of inside drives. Aggressive, uh, showing aggressiveness and ones. I'm like, hold, playmaking. I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> if, if, if Jabari Smith gives you this, the teams are going to be, this Rocket team will be tough. They're going to be tough. You know, and for me personally, um, prior to the Fred Van Vliet and the Dylan Brooks moves, which I predicted also, but prior to that, right during the playoff time, you know, my thing was I I, I personally thought they were going to try to get a, a, a star. James Harden, Jalen Brown, all that stuff. This is early on during the offseason, or still during the playoff time. I thought they, they were going to package maybe a Jabari Smith, KPJ, some other pieces also, to try to get a Jalen Brown, James Harden, or some other guys who could have been traded, but I'm glad that I'm glad that, that, that they did not, you know, because we as fans have to realize that these players, you know, everyone's not going to be an, an immediate star. Everyone's not going to be from the get go. Braun, Wade, you know, uh, Luca, De'Aaron Fox. Well, he he was okay, but Trey Young, you know. Everyone is not going to start off hot, blazing, looking pretty good, giving you 20 points a night. Players have to go at their own pace, and you can't always give up on guys also. So, you know, we as fans, including myself, i got to slow it down some, realize the bigger picture. You know, as the offseason went on also, I realized, okay, Harden's not coming, Brown's staying, he got the uh, the all-team, all-NBA thing, so he got the extra bonus max. So I'm like, okay, then I did prediction videos on Fred Van Vliet, Brooke Lopez, and Brooks. Obviously, Dylan, uh, excuse me, obviously Brooke Lopez d didn't come stay with stay with the, the Bucks. But, you know, I thought they were going to go with the veteran talent there, which they did. I got two out of three right. But Jabari Smith fit on this team. If if he can give you this and or some semblance of, of this, you know, he's not going to be playing the Pistons every night. He won't be being guarded by James Wiseman every night. You're going to get some better wing defenders. But if he can give you this, man, the, the Rockets are on, you know, they're on pace. And I've been talking to my friends about this also off the camera. But the Rockets, the Thunder, those two teams are the teams I'm looking at to be in the playoff hunt and maybe in the um, play-in games during this next season. You know, 
the Thunder now, with, and I'm going to do a video on this also solo, but the Thunder with Chet, Chet Holmgren now, if he stays healthy, looking a little dangerous. I'm not going to lie to you. The Rockets, the addition of Fred Van Vliet, I love Dylan Brooks. I don't care what the media and what the narrative is around him. And you have an aggressive Jabari Smith. You have a, a an improved Fred Van, uh, excuse me, an, an improved Jalen Green with now a veteran guard who can get him the ball and get him in good spots in Fred Van Vliet. And still have KPJ coming off as your sixth man probably with the Thompson twin, with Eason, with uh, uh a bunch of other guys, they're looking good. There's, and I know Ime Udoka is going to coach them up on, on, on defense. That's why I love the addition of two two-way players like Dylan Brooks and like Fred Van Vliet. They're going to get this team right. And if Jabari Smith can move his feet on defense, be aggressive on offense, drive to the paint, get some tough buckets. And my main thing was he's, he's a good shooter, a knockdown shooter in uh, college, but also learn some ball handling skills. Well, not learn, but improve your ball handling skills. Catch. You don't got to always catch and shoot. You know, dribble, do a little handle here and there, just enough to get you some space to create your own shot and or to also drive into the paint. You know, and seeing him do just that versus the Blazers, seeing him do just that versus the Pistons gave me some hope. Like, man, you know, but are you going to do the same thing or can you do the same thing when being guarded by AD on the perimeter? Can you do the same thing when you're being guarded by uh, Thibel, uh, Grant Williams, you know? So he's going to run into some good matchups. But I think the, from what I've seen, he's going to at least win you some. If you give him 10 chances, he might give you right now maybe three or four, and that's enough. Because like I said before, same with my scoop, same with my Brandon Miller um, takes in that one video a couple days ago. He's not a star guy. The ball will be in Fred Van Vliet's hand. The ball, the ball will be in KPJ, Jalen Green's hand for the most part. You'll get touches like Dylan Brooks. You'll get a, a, a few touches like uh, Jabari Smith and, and, and some other guys and the Thompson twins. So the, the ball, when they're on the court, will be in those four guys' hands. The Thompson twin, Green, KPJ, and Fred Van Vliet. You know, those are the main ball handlers. Jabari Smith will get his shots. Dylan Brooks get his shots. Him, him, him. No, these guys will get their shots. But the main setup guys and the ball will be in their hands for the most part for those, those guards mentioned earlier. So, you know, and Brooks too. I think Brooks going to get more shots than he normally, or probably around the same, but he's going to get his, you know, 12 to 15 shots up also. So, you know, shots are going to be tough to find in this Rockets offense maybe. We'll see. But as long as Jabari comes in on the defensive side and shows up and at least tries, I think Ime Udoka will keep him keep him in the rotation, and he kind of has to. You know, like I said, J Jabari's looking good. So you can't come from summer league, also the the team's former third overall pick just last year, and not you know play him because he's no. So I mean, as long as he shows up on and gives some defensive effort, he should be playing. Uh, starting, I'm not quite sure, but he should be playing at that four spot. And when he does, if you can give me some of this, that's exciting. You know, so uh, Houston Rockets fans, NBA fans in general, we have to slow it down. Let Victor Wimbanyama grow. Let Jabari Smith grow. Let these guys grow. Everyone will not be an immediate star. And we, ha as consumers, have to realize that. You know, so that's the exciting part of seeing these guys do grow. Because we see so many guys flame out. We see so many guys flame out, not work, can't do the job, off-field uh, off issues, on-court issues. But when you see young men like Jabari Smith say, hey, I'm playing summer league. Let's get it in. I didn't have a great first year. Let's get it in. It, it, it should be noted. It should be credit that he doesn't have to do it. We've we seen guys like Zion Williams, uh, or Williamson, whatever his name is, from uh, formerly of Stanford, now with the Grizzlies last couple of years. He's walking around with, with, with a young lady he should be playing. He hasn't had the, the best years with the Grizzlies. And also, you know, it, is he in, the, is he in the, the rotation? I'm not quite sure. You know, with the addition of these guys, and I had them also a, a prediction video getting Kelly Oubre. So, you know, is he going to be around or in, in the Grizzlies, uh, Grizzlies future plans? I'm not quite sure. So, you know, more guys like him should be playing. 
if you're if you're not solidified, if you're not guaranteed to be in the rotation, at, at, at least in the rotation, you know, you should be playing. But Jabari Smith might not even be a starter now. I'm not quite sure how the Rockets might line up, but as of right now, you know, uh, he could be seventh man off the bench behind KPJ. I'm not quite sure. We'll, we'll see. But he put in the work. He looked fantastic. I hope this carries on. I hope he stays healthy. And I hope everyone stays healthy in the league. You know, I know it's not possible. It's not realistic. But, you know, I hope everyone stays healthy. But if he can stay healthy and give me some of this, his stock's through the roof. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, and that was his main – the main thing on him was – a little soft and can't dribble, he's more of a catch-and-shoot guy. He's giving you some more dribbles. He's giving you some more aggressiveness. He's giving you some inside attacking moments. If he keeps giving you that, phew, man, sky's the limit. He he will live up to that third overall pick. And we got to give him time, though. We can't rush and we can't expect everyone to be the Tatums and Kyries. And, you know, from the get-go, you're looking great. You're looking pretty solid. Everyone's not going to be great. Everyone's not going to be looking solid. Everyone, you know, some people is going to need some time to grow, a couple of years. And the Rockets are looking pretty patient, and it might pan out for guys like Green and Smith and KPJ, and, you know. So uh, but that's it for the video, guys. Just want to talk about that, how impressive uh, Jabari Smith is and was so far this summer league. Hope to see him more. Hope he stays healthy, and I hope he continues to grow and and use what he's learned this offseason and push it on to the summer league and also to the real NBA games which will start in October. So that's it for the video, guys. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.